Singing in the evening, amen, amen, amen. One more time now, hey. singing like you mean it, amen, 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 amen. One more time now, aim to the master. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is time for us to come together here at the 11 a.m. worship service here at the East Baltimore Church of Christ. We know there's so many other places you can be, but God has placed you in that seat that you're sitting in is exclusive, exclusively just for you. Amen? Amen. 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 Not the seat over there. Not the seat over there. The seat that you are in yes. is exclusively just for you. Amen? Amen? Amen. We would like all our visitors, we'd like to thank all our visitors for spending time with us here today. Please fill out a visitor's card today so we can uh, just fellowship with you before you leave today. Amen? Amen. All our announcements will be presented on our, uh, on our email, on our, excuse me, on our website. Excuse me. All our announcements can be found on our website and all our service times as well as our Zoom programs. And our website is eastbaltimorecoc.com. For those of us here in attendance, let's please silence all devices in order to not disrupt the worship service. And we are asking those that are submitting prayer requests online, let's please submit them no later than 12 noon so we can print them out in a timely and organized manner. The order of worship today is as follows. Doing the announcements and visitors cards is myself, Brother McNeil. As you may know, today our song leader is Brother Handy. Amen. Communion will be officiated by Brother Lucas. Assistant Brother Lucas on the table, we have Brother Brown and Brother Taylor. Offering will be assisted by, uh, officiated by our very own Brother Rogers. Assisting Brother Rogers on the table will have Brother Johnson as well as Brother Brown. Scripture and prayer will come from Brother Claiborne. Um, and Brother Claiborne will be reading for Brother Wilkie, Exodus 14, 1 through 4. And his message is entitled, Your Story is God's Glory. Amen. Your story is God's glory. Brother Bethia will be preaching from the book of John, John 7, verses 1 through 4, and his message is entitled, On Our Way Home. On Our Way Home. Closing prayer will come from our very own Brother DeShiel. Um, we now said it. Set this time aside for those who have uh, repentance or confession on their hearts. Please stand to be recognized at this time. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. If you guys did not hear that, we had uh, three individuals. They have stood and said they've sinned and they repent of those sins. Amen? Amen. At this time, let us stand and go to our Lord and Savior in prayer. Let us bow. Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, we come today with humble hearts and bowed heads, Father. Father, you have three of your children who have said they've sinned and repented of those sins, Father. Father, bless them, Father. Father, they're, for they are not the only ones that have missed the mark, Father. But, Father, they have boldly stood on your word and, and said that they've repented, Father. So just bless them, Father. Ease their minds and their hearts of the burdens that they're carrying, Father. Let them place them burdens, their burdens at your feet, not to resume them again, Father. Father, be with each and every one of us that are here tonight, today, Father. Be with those who are trying to make their way here. 
get, allow them to get here safe and unharmed, Father. Father, put your ever-loving arms around all those that are grieving at this time, Father. Father, for the loss of loved ones, Father. Bless them, Father. Ease their minds as well as their hearts, Father. And Father, let us, as, as, your, as of your children, Father, let us extend our hand out to them, Father. And just give them some type of comfort, Father, in whichever way we can, Father. Father, be with Brother Bethia and Brother Wilkie as they boldly stand on your word, not adding to it or subtracting from it, but making us better Christians today than we were yesterday, Father. Father, be with all those first responders out here in the world. Bless them as well. Be with our military also, Father. Father, put your ever-loving arms around our children. Father, for this world is getting rougher and rougher by the day, Father. Father, just, just bless them. Protect them, Father. Give them all the things that they're in need of as well, Father. Father, be with their parents. Guide their parents and all those that are ministering to our children as well, Father. Protect each and every one of us, Father. Father, we thank you for the, the grace and mercy you carried us through the night with, Father, and giving us the ability to wake up today in the use of our limbs, Father. Father, for we love you, we thank you, and we have so many blessings that we can just leave it to you, Father. And we thank you for those many blessings, Father. Father, for this prayer and our prayers we leave unto you, Father. Let us, as a collective unit, all say amen. Amen. Good morning, church. I hope y'all feeling good this morning. Amen. God brought us to the house of the Lord to praise and worship him this morning. That's just what we'll do. Amen. Amen. Our next song this morning will be, let's do Salvation Has Been Brought Down. Amen. Salvation Has Been Brought Down. You have it? Let us sing. Jesus gave his life for ransom yonder on Calvary. We owe Mount Calvary, cruel Calvary. And he paved the way by blood that we might win a bright shining crown. So praise the Lord, salvation has been brought down. Praise the Lord, salvation has been brought from heaven. Go and shout, shout it out and tell it the world around. Go preach it and tell to the people in sorrow. Let's tell it tomorrow, preach the word of God that we might win. A crown in heaven, tell the lost, tell all the lost, salvation is full and for Hannah spread the news, blessed news all over the land and sea, go preach it and tell to every nation, all over creation, praise the Lord. Salvation has been brought down all along Without a friend he suffered to pay it all oh, Yes, he paid it Jesus paid it all And in his blessed promises Sweet victory can be found Salvation has been brought down. Go on and praise the Lord. Salvation has been brought down. Go and shout it out and tell it the world around. Go preach it and tell to the people in sorrow. Let's tell it tomorrow, preach the word of God that we might win a crown in heaven. Tell the lost, tell all the lost, salvation is full and to sin us spread the news, blessed news all over the land and sea. Go preach it and tell in every nation. All over 
creation praise the lord salvation has been brought down there's a blessed home prepared way over in glory long blessed glory land and I have trusted in his love and now I'm heaven bound. Salvation has been brought down. Go on and praise the Lord. Salvation is full out down. Go and shout it out and tell it the world around. Go preach it and tell to the people in sorrow. Let's tell it tomorrow. Preach the word of God that we might a shining crown in heaven. Tell the lost, tell all of the lost. Salvation is full and to sinners spread the blessed news all over the land and sea go preach it and tell it in every nation all over creation praise the Lord salvation has been brought down amen amen our next song before we have scripture and prayer, I'm sorry, before we have com communion with the Lord, um, let's do thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord. I say thank, thank you, thank you, Lord. I gotta say thank you, Lord. Thank you. just want to thank you, Lord. You've been so good, been so, been so good. I said you've been so want to thank you, Lord. Well, before you, this time to commemorate the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask at this time that there be no walking and that there be no talking. I will be reading in your hearing 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at verse 23. For I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. 
at this time works Brother Taylor to give thanks for the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you at this time thanking you so much for the bread, Father, with, which is your Son's body. We ask that uh, we, as we take this bread, we examine ourselves and take it with clean hands and a pure heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, men are weak and sickly among you, and men asleep. This time works Brother Brown to give thanks for the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your son, Jesus. Father, we ask you to bless this fruit of the vine, which is your son's shed blood. Father, we ask you to, we partake with clean hands and pure heart, giving you all the honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. You saved my soul. You saved my soul. You saved, saved my, saved my soul. I just want to thank you Lord you've been so good you've been been so so good you've been
Has everyone been served? This now brings a communion service to a close. We turn the remaining part of the service over the hand of the brethren for completion. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, church. Our next song this morning will be In My Veins. Amen? It's in my veins, Lord, it's in my veins, yeah, it's in my veins, Lord, it's in my veins. While the blood is, blood is a running warm, it's in my veins, down in my veins. I said it's in my, my veins, Lord, it's in my veins, yeah, it's in my veins, Lord, it's in my veins. I said now while the blood is a running warm, it's in my veins, down in my veins. Well, see, I'm gonna sing y'all a little over here, yeah, I'm gonna sing just a little over there. Now, while the blood is a running warm, it's in my vein, down in my vein. I said it's in my, my veins, Lord, it's in my veins. I got it down in my veins. Oh, see, while the blood is, oh, it's running warm it's in my vein yeah it's in my vein see now i'm gonna pray y'all a little over here yeah i'm gonna pray just a little over there now while the blood is a running warm it's in my vein down in my veins i said it's in my my veins lord it's in my veins I got it down in my veins. I said, now while the blood is a running warm, it's in my veins. Well, it's in my veins. Well, see, I'm gonna shout just a little over here. And I'm gonna shout just a little over there. Now while the blood is a running warm, it's in my vein, down in my veins. I said it's in my, my veins, Lord, it's in my vein, yeah, it's in my, my vein, Lord, it's in my veins. I said now while the blood is a running warm, Warm, it's in my veins, down in my veins. I said it's in my my veins, Lord, it's in my. I got it down in my veins. Oh, while the blood is, oh, it's running warm. It's in my veins, down in my veins. Amen. Amen. All right, church, our next song before we have scripture and prayer, let's do I Love My Savior too. Amen. If we have it, let us sing. Jesus, my heavenly King, loves me, I know. Praises to him I sing, onward I go. Closely to him I cling, blessings still flow. Oh, I love my Savior too. You know I love my Savior, He loves me too, now sing His favor in everything I do. 
You see, walking with him each day, love life does shine. Doing his will always, never repine. Kneeling to him, I pray thy will, not mine. Oh, I love my Savior too. Don't you know that I love my Savior? He loves me too. Now I'll sing his faith, a blessed favor in everything I do. Mm, happy to serve my friend, lean on his arm. Rapture will never end nothing. Oh, voices will sweetly blend under his charm. Oh, I love my Savior. Oh, don't you know, don't you know, say I love my Savior. He, oh, said he loved me too. Oh, sing with me, say I'll sing his favor. Oh, in everything I Oh, sing with me, sing with me, say I love my, my, my Savior, my, my Savior, he said he loved me too. Oh, don't you know, say I'll sing his favor, oh, in everything I one more time, one more time, sing with me, say, I love my Savior. He, oh, do he love me too? Oh, church, you know that I'll sing his a blessed favor, a blessed favor in everything I do. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm here before you uh, to bring today's scripture text. And I'm so glad that, um, that it's not incumbent on me getting these names right to get in heaven. Okay, because they, they got some Old Testament names that are tongue twisters. Okay, but we're going to do the best we can. All right. Uh, Brother Wilkes uh, will be coming from his scripture text is Exodus chapter 14, verses 1 through 4. And the title of his message is, Your Story is God's Glory. And the text reads as follows. Exodus chapter 14, verses 1 through 4. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak ye unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Pihahafroth, between Migdal and the sea, over against Baal Zephon, before it shall before it shall you encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he may follow after them, and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord and they did so. Amen. Amen? Good, all right. Um, Bro Brother Bethia's text will be coming from John chapter number seven, verses one through four. Title his message is on our way home. And in John seven, one through four, it reads, after these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he walked, excuse me, excuse me, for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of the tabernacles was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, depart thence, depart hence and go into Judea 
that the that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to know openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. Amen? Amen. I read into your hearing uh, Exodus chapter 14, verses 1 through 4, uh, and John 7, 1 through 4. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the application of his word. Let us that, that can stand, go stand, and let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Holy, holy, holy art thou, Father God, and above thee there is no other. Lord, we come to you, hearts filled with thanksgiving, grateful, grateful for another beautiful day in which you blessed us to see. Lord, thank you for uh, waking us up, clothing us in our right mind, giving us a reasonable portion of health and strength that we might have gone about the things we've done thus far today, giving us safe passage to here where we can come together and, and offer up a worship that is pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Yes, we thank those that are joining us uh, uh, through media, through the live stream, and we pray that you bless them in the areas they stand in need of as well. Lord, I repent of any and all sin that I have committed in word, thought, or deed, and humbly ask for your forgiveness that my prayers and our prayers would never be hindered. Lord, we just thank you so much for all you've done in our lives, even up to this very second of this day. You've been so good to us, better than we have could ever have been to ourselves. And we just want to stop and say thank you. Lord, we uh, uh, have an attitude of gratitude for all that you demonstrated through your son, Jesus Christ, who came and paid a debt that we owed, that we couldn't pay out of the love that he has for us. And, and we pray that we would serve him all the days of our lives and demonstrate the love that we have for him. Lord, um, we, we ask your blessing on those men serving who are about to come before us and break into us the bread of life. Lord, give them a ready recall of the things they studied. Bless them in uh, their, uh, uh, all the things that they remember. Give them a remembrance of those things and help them to present it in a way that even the littlest, youngest among us can understand and then apply it to our lives. Yes. Lord, for those that uh, stand a guilty distance away from you at this moment, Lord, we pray that they, uh, they were here and they might ask the question, what must I do to be saved? We pray that for every Bible question that we get, we give them a Bible answer uh, to their question. Lord, we pray that we continue to be uh, good stewards over all you've entrusted to our care that one day we can hear you say well done thou good and faithful servant enter in my, into my joy continue to be with us bless those that are grieving those that are, are going through medical issues at this time those are rehabil rehabilitating Lord we just need you more today than we've ever needed you before we pray you be merciful to us and attend uh, to our needs in, in your time and in your way we, we pray that whatever we receive from you, that we'll stand ready to give your name all the praise, honor, and glory that it rightly deserves. This is our prayer that we offer in the precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. And let us all say, Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Bethea. <laughs> My wife keep reminding me to remind y'all to stay standing. I'll be forgetting. So the Lord is still working on me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Our next song before we have um, the word from Brother Bethea will be our God. He is alive. Amen. We have it. I think y'all know this. Let us sing. There is beyond the azure blue a God concealed from human sight. He tinted skies with heavenly hue and framed the world with its great mind. There is a God 
He is alive. In him we live and we survive. From dust our God created man. He is our God, the great I am. There was a long, long time ago, a God whose voice the prophets heard. He is the God that we should know, who speaks from his inspired word. I'm so glad he is alive, and in him we live, and we survive. From dust our God created man, he is our God, the great I am. Secure is life from mortal mind, God holds that germ within his hand. Though men may search, they cannot find. For God alone does understand. There is a God, he is alive. In him we live and we survive from dust our God created man he is our God the great I am our God who sun upon a tree a life was willing there to give that he from sin might set man free and evermore with him could live don't you know there is a god he is alive and in him we live and we survive well from dust our god created man he is our god the great i am God, he is alive, in him we live, and we survive. From dust our God created man, he is our God, the great I There is a God, he is alive, oh yes he is, in him we live, oh, and we and we survive from dust our God.
created man. Oh, he is our God. Yes, he is the south gate but if you came in through the south gate then you would leave out the north and I'm just saying that I don't want you to leave the same way you came in is that all right church it sounds like I'm ready to preach this morning amen somebody please pray for us and our family sister Wilkie would couldn't be here today but uh just keep her in your prayer. My son, Niall, thank you for your prayers uh, as he continues to heal. He's doing well. And my family, um, uh, East Baltimore, thank you for your hospitality. Um, I am Brother John Wilkie, minister of the Hartford County Church of Christ. Uh, we have been um, had the privilege of worshiping at the East Baltimore congregation uh, 10 months now. And, and, you know, and I've been praying and I got a question, brother, because I think somebody else is praying a different prayer. <laughs> I don't think our prayers is the same, Doc. Uh, we've been here a while. And uh, so continue to pray for us because we want to uh, uh, there can, continues to be uh, delay after delay. And so just just keep us in your prayer. We'll talk with the uh, Hartford County congregation about where we are. We'll have a congregational meeting on, on Zoom or online, but please continue to pray uh, for uh, our congregation. Exodus chapter 14, and the verses are one through four. You have already heard that, and I'm glad Brother Claiborne read it, so I ain't got to try to pronounce the words again. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about your story is God's glory. Amen. Amen. And I want to give you uh, a rhema word. Rhema word is a word that uh, particularly explicates something that you're going through and there's an answer for it in the scripture. Amen. Uh, there is a word that's just for you and I don't know who, how it's going to hit you, but I know it definitely hit me because uh, I needed to hear Rhema word. And as I was studying, um, I'm going to share with you what uh, I got uh, out of this particular passage. Very familiar passage. The children of Israel uh, have come out of Egypt. Last week we talked about no leftovers, right? And now um, they have been trapped uh, between three mountains in the Red Sea. OK, and um, we're going to be talking about your story uh, is God's glory. There is this uh, idiomatic expression, raising the bar. Y'all heard of that? That has become a metaphor in our culture uh, that we have applied to many areas in our life. Uh, we talk about sports, you talk about Jordan, then you say LeBron raised the bar. That's an argument. Amen. That's a barbershop discussion. Um, but it's about going to the next level. I almost called this, there's levels to this. But I switched the sermon back to your glory, your story is, is God's glory. Um, industries raise the bar to give you a better product, right? Creativity. If we want to talk about academia. You always want to go to the next level, right? Um, course fashion and um, electronics. Brother Miles told me once you buy a computer, next year is old. That's what Brother Miles told me. Why? Because they are always trying to raise the bar. They're always 
uh, trying uh, to go to uh, the next level. Um, if you still have a flip phone, I got news for you. Uh, there's new technology out here, amen, um, whereby uh, there is a, a bar has been raised. Uh, technology is taken to the next level. Uh, as we apply this idiomatic expression uh, to everything else, sadly, we struggle to do it in the church. Amen. Amen, preacher. We rather be mediocre. Amen, preacher. We rather stay where we are. Uh, to be complacent. Amen, preacher. Uh, when God has clearly challenged us and commanded us to go to the next level. I'm here to tell you God has given us permission. Matter of fact, has commanded that we take it to the next level. I know the Hebrew writer said, provoke one another to love. Amen, somebody? And good works, right? If y'all don't like that scripture, Jesus said, because sometimes if Jesus ain't say it, we don't want to. You got to say it in red writing. And let's read. Jesus says, remember he said, uh, greater works. These works that I do, greater works than these. That's what you're going. What, what's greater? You're going to raise the bar. Amen. This is words of Jesus. I think he said, uh, in Luke 7, 28, he that is talking about John the Baptist, of all men born of a woman, he is the greatest prophet. But the least in the kingdom is greater than John. He's not talking about the person. He's talking about the ministry. He's talking about our, our spiritual uh, appetite ought to be growing. We should be going to the next level. We should be trying to, to raise the bar. Yeah. And I know sometimes it's hard to put new wine in old wineskins. Because it's impossible to do. We're talking about trying to, we think that everything new is unscriptural. And we want to stay right where we are. Don't change no song. Don't change nothing. Just keep it where are. New folks, young folks coming in. Don't change nothing. And God says, you need to take this thing to the next level. In Matthew 5.20, Jesus said, accept your righteousness, exceed. Don't that sound like next level? Amen. So I'm making sure, because when I say that, where is that in the scripture? I didn't gave you scripture. Your righteousness is supposed to go to the next level. It's supposed to exceed that of the Pharisees. Paul said in Philippians 3.14, I press. There's a mark. Not the low calling. It's a high calling. And he's continued. Uh, not that I've already attained, he says, but I'm trying to what? I'm trying to take it to the, I'm trying to raise the bar. Maybe I should have named this drunk Raise the Bar. Um, I want you to understand how important it is to raise the bar. Hebrew writer said we're in a better covenant. Better promises. Better mediator. Amen, somebody. Better sacrifice. Better covenant. Just better. Always going to the next level. That being said, I believe that God has called us into his service so that he can use us. Because in all of our lives, glory is bound up in how God is trying to use us. God's glory is bound up and right. how he uses things that he has created. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. 
Read Psalms 19 and 1. It says the heavens declare the glory of God and his handiwork, right? And, show, and the firmament show if this his handiwork. That means there's a transaction between being created and giving uh, God back the glory. Because God don't stoop down and glorify himself. He uses you and me. If he's going to get some glory, he ought to get it from those that he has created. Because if the, if the world... And if the earth and the trees and the sun and the moon and the stars all do what they're supposed to do, they're giving God his glory. Yes. What about you? All right. wow, the glory yes. is wrapped up in your life. Yes. Wow, and how God wants to use you. Um, he has every plan to get glory out of your lives, but you are going to have to let God use you. How he wants to use you, not how you want him to use you. Preach up. Preach up. Y'all, did y'all miss that caveat? Say it one more time. Listen. God is going to get glory out of you. One way or the other. We want to tell God how to glorify him. God doesn't need your input. He's going to glorify himself in you how he wants to glorify. It. It's very important to understand because sometimes when God squeezes glory out of our life, it costs us something. Emotionally, spiritually, sometimes even physically. He wants to get glory out of you. So he got to squeeze. Because in order for him to get glory out of you, he's got to take your faith to another level. Amen. And to take your faith to another level, sometimes we find ourselves trapped between the three mountains and the Red Sea. Because in order for God to allow us to grow in our faith, he has to put us in a situation where there's no way out. You know, I used to go in the clubs, Brother Bethea. And when I go in, I always look to find out where the exit is at. That's just a habit. You know what I mean? Exit door, okay, then over there, go in the bathroom. If there ain't no window so I can get out, then I don't use the bathroom. I'm just telling you the life that I was in. When I go into a place, I'm scoping out where the exit signs are. But God will put you in the place there's no exit sign. Preach up. Preach up. There's no way out. Why is there no way out? So that when he does come and deliver you, you will know that it was him. And everybody in here has got a story. Everybody in here has got a story about how God delivered them out of a circumstance where your education couldn't get you out. Where your experience of preaching couldn't get you out. Where nothing could get you out. Your cousin. Nobody. Amen. That only God is the only one who can get you out of this circumstance. And so sometimes he, you find yourself between these three mountains and the Red Sea. And you have to watch and stand and watch and see the salvation of the Lord. We are no better than the children of Israel. Amen. Our deliverance. God has to put a stamp on his people. Amen. And he has to put a stamp in your life so that you will know that he got you out. And believe it or not, 
church, if you look at verse 4, I'm cutting across the field on y'all. Okay? Uh, we understand verse 1, the Bible says, the Lord spake unto Moses, so we know it's the Lord. Tell him to speak unto the children of Israel and told them which way to go because he wants them to be in a certain situation. So when he comes to deliver them, he has to be able to put you in a situation where you need it. So God will put you in a situation where you need him to come get you. Because he has to put a stamp on your life to say that you are mine. But there's got to be a deliverance in order for that to take place. And so in three, Pharaoh, he says, for Pharaoh will say to the children of Israel, they are entangled and it'll look like to your enemy. I don't know who I'm talking to. Uh, your enemy, it will look like you don't know what you're doing. Also. God will come and deliver you whether your enemy want to let you go or not. You understand deliverance? And so, and so in verse 4, he says, And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he, shall, that he shall follow after them, and I will be honored. You see that word honored? That means glorified. King James is using honor, depending on what version you read, it means glorified. What, what's going on here? Here's the part we don't like. Sometimes your entrapment in this place ain't about you. It ain't got nothing to do with you. He's trying to get glory out of Pharaoh. But he's going to use you to get glory out of him. See, God puts you in situations where we always think it's about us. Oh, God is trying to move. Oh, God. And sometimes it ain't about that. Now, God can do more things in one incident. Then we could have, he can do multiple things. I'm going to teach you this. I'm going to teach you this. And Pharaoh, I'm going to teach you this, but I'm going to teach you this. And I'm going to put my stamp over here. But what I'm trying to share with you is that sometimes it's the people you're around that God wants to minister to. So he'll put John in a situation. Amen. So that when he delivers John, Brother Bethea see it. Because I want glory out of Pharaoh. He always said, I am the God that brought you out of. Did you notice? You ever hear that in the Bible? What are you doing, God? I'm referring back to your deliverance. Because when you start acting stupid. If God could still write, he was like, I'm the God that delivered you out of. And you can fill it in. I'm the God that delivered you because he uses that. Why? Because that's the stamp. I'm the God that delivered you out of Egypt. He says that all the time. What are you doing, God? I'm reminding you of when I put my stamp on you. When did you do it? When you were in camp with the three mountains and you couldn't go nowhere? Amen. And you thought it was over. And then here comes God. To deliver you out of it. God will bring you out even if your enemy don't want you out there. But I need you in a certain situation so I can come and get you out. Egypt will glorify God. Even in their disobedience. They're going to glorify God. I have vessels of honor and I have vessels of dishonor. I created everybody, even Satan. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. I created him. He was an angel, he was the song leader. No offense, amen. Amen. But 
when I say the song leader, I'm not talking about you, Brother Andy. Amen. The song leader wanted glory. Amen. You can't take God's glory. The preacher can't preach for his glory. The teacher can't teach for his glory. The glory belongs to God and he ain't sharing it with nobody. But each and every one of you, you have a story. You have a life experience. And God's glory is wrapped up in your situation. Your story is his glory. Because once he brings you out, he ought to get praise. Yes, Ain't got to tell you to pray. Ain't got to tell you to sing. Ain't got to tell you to come to church. Amen. Why? Because he's getting glory out of you. And I think it's very important that we understand that everything that has breath, even down to when he returns, that those who are in the place of torment right. are going to glorify God in that place. Because every knee shall bow. That's what my Bible says. Every tongue going to confess that Jesus is who he claimed Amen. to be. He is the son of God. He is God in the flesh. He is the savior, the deliverer. But I don't want you to get frustrated when you find yourself in a situation where you can't do anything. Yeah. Wow. And you're stuck. And you're trying to figure out which way to go and you don't know which way to go because whatever way you turn, there's no remedy for it. Yeah. Wow. Young people. God is going to allow you to go through some things that are not going to glorify. That's right. That's right, preacher. Now, I told you before, there's consequences for choices. But God will deliver you until he don't. Y'all miss that. He will deliver you until he won't. And he will surround you with every opportunity to change, to repent. We see that with Nineveh. We see that with uh, Abraham, Sodom and Gomorrah. Went all the way down. God, if you find 50, if I find 40, if I find, he went all the way down to 10. And it's interesting. It's interesting. That when he went down to the number 10, that's how many folks was in Lot's family. Amen. Amen. If you find 10, couldn't even find 10, including Lot's family. So he destroyed it. And then Lot said, well, let me go over. I don't want to go in the mountain with Abraham. Let me go over to, was that, Zoar or whatever that place is. Zoar is right... It's next to Solomon Gomorrah. It's a smaller town, but he still ain't want to totally leave the place. Man, I'm getting ready to go into something else right now. Here's what I'm trying to share with you. Uh, Lot's wife, because that's what he called it. ain't giving the name. That's what he wants you to remember by Lot's wife. She couldn't let go. She couldn't let go of the world. She couldn't let go of the passions. She couldn't let go of that, that culture. And she turned around and turned into a pillar of salt. It became a testimony because their story had to do with losing their mother and going to a place where they will have to continue to give God his glory. As the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea, and I'm about to land the plane, 
They're crossing the Red Sea. It opens up. Moses says, the Pharaoh and them started coming. Um, and I actually looked all this stuff up. I was studying this stuff. And they cross the Red Sea on the part of the Red Sea that went down and up because on the left and on the right, it was a, they were huge craters. So there was only one path across. When the waters open up, and you can still see it today, that there is a place in the Red Sea that goes like this and then it comes up. The waters departed, allowed them to cross over, close back up, and they still can see the chariot wheels at the bottom. I'm talking about today. That this is not just some story. This actually happened. And that's a phenomenon that is totally uh, unforgettable. And they went over it and they put the stones there to remember that. And then they begin to sing. And Moses sang on, on one side of the congregation. Amen. I ain't trying to start nothing. And Miriam led the women. Read your Bible. Moses sang. Miriam led the women. Amen. Amen. Two part response song. I'm just trying to share. I ain't trying to start nothing but there. Because I'm getting ready to sit down. What I'm saying is that don't let that incident go to waste and find yourself in the wilderness for the rest of your life. Because even though God delivered them, they still murmured when they went across. And one of the reasons that, well, I ain't going to say one of the possible reasons that they continue to murmur and wanted to go back to Egypt and do all that kind of stuff is because they had some Egyptians with them. So you got to be careful of your company. They took the Egyptians with them. It wasn't all of them wasn't yeah. Jews. The Egyptians went along with them. We going with you. You going. We going with you. And they went with them. And then when it got tough and here comes God covering them at night, making sure uh, they don't freeze. There's a pillar of fire so they won't get cold in the daytime. There's a cloud so they won't get hot, give them shade. And they complained and complained and complained. And God says, for you complain so much, y'all going to stay here and I'm going to raise up your children. And they're going to see the promised land because of you stiff necked people. So as I take my seat, your story is God's glory. How's it going to go? Because if you write it, you're going to end up in a place you don't want to be. But if you let Jesus write it and let him be the author and finisher. Y'all missing this stuff. Y'all supposed to shout on that. I'm going to shout on that. We talking about writing a story. He is the author and finisher of our what? Let God write your story. Amen, church. And you're forever ever be blessed. God bless you and God keep you. Amen. Come on, song leader. <laughs> Amen, church. Another round of applause for that powerful teaching from Brother Wilkie. You ready? <laughs> We're going to let God squeeze the glory out this voice. Amen. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, our next song before we have a, a word from Brother Bethea will be Sing Hallelujah by and by. Amen. If we have it, let us sing. When we reach that city of the new Jerusalem, well, we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. How the ransom singers will together lift that hymn. We're going to sing hallelujah, hallelujah, by and by. 
Oh, what joy when we get home. We're going to rest beneath. We'll rest beneath that cloudless storm In that land where saints never die We're gonna sing hallelujah, hallelujah by and by In that mighty chorus voices will so sweetly blend We're gonna sing hallelujah Hallelujah, by and by Gone will be our sadness, pleasures There will never end We're gonna sing hallelujah Hallelujah, by and by Oh, I'm talking about joy Oh, what joy when we get home We're gonna rest beneath Rest beneath that cloud Let's go on. In that land where saints never die We're gonna sing hallelujah Hallelujah And by Victory and love will be our everlasting You know we're gonna sing hallelujah Hallelujah, by and by Praising our Redeemer Then beside the crystal stream We're gonna sing hallelujah Hallelujah Oh, I'm talking about joy Oh, what joy when we get home We're gonna rest beneath Rest beneath that cloudless storm In that land where saints never die We're gonna sing hallelujah, hallelujah Oh, I'm talking about joy Oh, what joy when we For his goodness, his mercy, and his grace. We thank God for that powerful lesson given to us by Brother Wilkie, Amen. letting us know our story is God's glory. Yes, Truly be thankful to God for that. And it's so good to just be with the people of God, yes, praising our God together. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord and make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. And truly we thank God for who he is and what he is in our lives. It's so good to see uh, 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 back again here, sister. I'm Cherry. She was out for a long time. This is about the third time she's been back again. So good. She's mending and getting, and getting, getting strong. Amen. Amen. Also, it's so good to see the Leslie family, our brother Leslie and sister Leslie. So good to see them here. And, 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 and I love seeing folk when they up in big numbers. Coming out to serve God. Yes, uh, that, that, that lets me know that, you know, you don't have to stay home just because you're 90. Yes, you can come on out Amen. and worship our great God in heaven. So just so good to see that family out as well. And so good to see the Reds out this morning as well. May God bless you. And just so good for, for God's goodness, his mercy, and his grace. Um, also, um, Sister Angeline Boyd's family, please continue to keep them in prayer. I see Sister Washington here and uh, Sister uh, Dixon here as well. She's one of the closer. In fact, Sister Boyd brought her here. 
So it's just so good just to have them in the house and pray for that family as we funeralize our sister boy on Friday and the viewing is on Thursday. You'll get more information uh, before you leave for the day. Uh, just asking you, if you will, to open up your Bibles to John chapter number seven. John chapter number seven. Our God is a good God. Yes, yes he is. Um, when you look at this particular lesson, here's what I want you to see. I want you to see, uh, and I, lo I just love the way Brother Wilkie's and, and, and our lessons just come together without even talking about it. Because when you look at this story, you're going to be able to see in Jesus' life how all he wanted to do was glorify his father. That was his whole mission. He didn't care about nothing else but giving his father some glory. In fact, he gave his father so much glory, his father called from heaven, said, you have glorified me and I'm going to glorify you. Because when you look and understand uh, uh, what's happening, you can see all that Jesus had to go through down here. Yeah. Not because he necessarily, necessarily liked it, but because it gave his father glory. And when you look here, and that's why I titled this lesson, Going Through Stuff on Our Way Home. Right. On Our Way Home. Because what I want you to see about this is, is that the challenges of life, we need to change that word calling them, from calling them challenges to calling them delayed victories. Okay. Oh, yes. Because I, I hope every challenge in your life you expect to overcome. I mean, I hope that some of you are like, oh, really? Yes. I'm hoping your expectation. It's to overcome whatever this life throws on you. You want to, you got to be higher of it. Unless you get so down and depressed, you're all messed up. You got to get to a point where no matter what, you're giving God some glory. So when you look at this lesson today, I want you to see in John chapter number seven, verse one through four, understanding that Jesus has to go through two powerful things as he's giving God some glory. And here's what they are. So all we know, but the book of John was written in the, and, 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 and talking about the latter part of Jesus' life. Amen. Talking about him close, close to Calvary. And as he is, as John is writing these things down, he pointed out some significant stuff that Jesus had to go through on his way home. So what happens is, is that, first of all, in John chapter number 6, in verse number uh, 60, you're going to find out that the first thing Jesus had to go through that was a challenge is being able to accept acceptance and rejection. He had to learn how to do that. Jesus' ministry was filled with strong teachings that challenged men's heart to think about where they stood with him. Amen. He had no problem telling you about yourself. Amen. If telling you about yourself will help you to get where you need to be. Amen. That's the beautiful thing. He didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't wash it down. He told Peter, Satan got you. Amen, preacher. He told, he, 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 Jesus would often call out, if, it, if his disciples were, were arguing, he would ask him, what you fighting about? Because he was always striving to be able to, to, to go through this life to Calvary all the way home, having glorified God. So in verse 60, it says here, because Jesus said, unless you drink my blood, unless you eat my body, you have no part with me because they couldn't figure it out. Amen. Because they didn't understand, which teaches me there's going to be some stuff God can do to us that we don't understand. Amen. That's right. There's just some stuff you ain't going to get it. But what I'm telling you to do is the same thing these apostles are going to do. Say, I don't know what they're going to do, but we stand right here. So when you look here, it says here, many therefore of the disciples, that's John 60, John 6, verse 60, when they had heard this, said, this saying, this is a hard saying, they said, who can hear it? And when Jesus knew in himself 
that his disciples complained, murmured at it. He said unto them, doeth I offend you? Now, I, I like that. He's challenging them. Okay. All, this, all this stuff you've been through me with, all the stuff we've been through together, right. you tell me because I said drink the blood and eat the body, all of a sudden you offended? Uh, and that's like us sometimes. Amen. God, he gave us blessing on top of blessing on top of blessing on top of blessing on top of blessing. And as soon as the one storm comes uh, that we can't wrap our arms around it, we forget about everything. We can forget. It's almost like he ain't never done nothing for us. It's almost like he's never held us out a rock in a hard place. It's like he's never stood by our side. It's like he's never carried us. And that's what they were going through back in the first century. He says, to the disoffend you, verse 62, what and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Meaning, no matter what your flesh is saying, the spirit is quick, is living, and is life. No matter what. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying no matter on your way home, no matter what life bring you, Give God glory out of whatever you going through. Remind God that I know that I know that I know that I know you ain't left me. Remind God that you still say he's great. You're still wonderful. You're still powerful. Even though I can't figure you out, but you higher than I am, I trust you. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. So when you look at this, you can see here that that's where you have to be. Verse 64 says, but there, Jesus said, but there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believeth not. Y'all got that? He knows where you stand. He knows that he know, listen, he know why you here. Amen. Amen. If you just here because I ain't been in church in a long time and I'm going, he knows that. If you here simply because traditionally this is where I need to be, he knows that. If you are here, no, if your body is here. And your mind on the other side of town. He know that too. He know, he know, he know, he know why you here. Listen, you can't have a fake relationship with Jesus. That's earth, that's earth stuff. Only relationships, that's, that's earth stuff. You can't have no those relationships. God knows everything. So he told them, and some of you, he told them, uh, verse 30, uh, 64, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. Yeah. Wow. And he said, verse 65, therefore I say unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. Hold it right there. Right. Yeah. He just said that because of the reality of there's going to be some stuff on your way home that you got to go through and you don't understand it just because that's going to be happening. Only way you're going to stay in this fight is that it's been given unto you of my father. Y'all ain't got that. What he's saying is you can't think is that fake the funk? Something like that. You can't fake the stuff. You can't fake it. It's got to be real. And Jesus said that, that the devil going to get so bad sometimes in your life, bring so much stuff in your life, that, that until unless you are for real genuine, be called of my father, then you're going to back up. 
Therefore, he said unto you that no man can come unto me except it be given of him of my father. And then he demonstrated in verse 66, Brother Claiborne, what happened? From that time. And from that time. Go ahead. Many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. From that time when he called them out. Come on, come on, when he called them out because they were fake. <laughs> they, got, they got honest and said, you, oh, you know what? You're right. You're right. I, I, can't, I, I, I can't go with this no more. No. I can't. See, and again, yeah. you can't let life do that to you. Right. Never let, all of us going to get weak from time to time. Yeah. All of us going to have struggles from time to time. I don't care how strong you think you are, there are some storms that's going to weigh you down. And it's going to surprise you. You're going to be surprised that I'm feeling like this. But what you got, if you're real, is that mindset that I'm staying with Jesus. That mindset where I don't know what's going on. I don't know why I'm feeling like this. I don't know why I'm thinking like this. But I'm not going anywhere from my God. Though he kill me, I ain't going nowhere. Watch this. So now, Jesus goes and has to deal with his main guys. He got the big group. Amen. But now he know the main guys got shaken as well. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Verse 67. Then said Jesus unto the twelve. So Jesus did. He said, okay, I got to deal with them. Now y'all turn. And he said to them, what? Will you also go away? So will you stand? Wow. Wow. You seen me? You've been in my life. We ate together. We 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 we, we slept. Uh, lay bed down together. We 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 and we 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 you did miracles together. You've seen all this stuff. Where do you stand with me? Now, notice, eleven of them said nothing. Cause everybody, y'all don't got it. Usually, usually, what happens is even the strongest among us. Sometimes we, that's when you can tell who really is the strongest among you. Uh-huh. By who stands out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When there's a storm happening. Okay. See, everybody can be strong. Everybody got something to say when it's something easy. Yeah. <laughs> but as soon as it costs you, it's almost like, this. I got to give you an example of this. Everybody can tell you um, when you are homeless. Where you can find a shelter and tell the only shelter that's left is their house. They got all the ideas. They got all the ideas. Or you can go up to Franklin Square. Or you can go down on Liberty Road. Or you can go up there in Wyndham Park. Or you can go down there on North Avenue. And when everything is failed and nowhere else to go, now you're quiet. You got an extra bed. You got two extra bedrooms. What I'm trying to let you know is, is that, that when, 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 when life, when stuff happened on the way home, Amen. you got to be real willing to give God his glory. Amen. Peter said, what Peter said? Verse number 69. The 68. Then 68. Simon Peter uh-huh. answered him, uh-huh. Lord, to whom shall we go? Uh-huh. Thou hast the words of eternal life. Hold it. I like it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I like it. He didn't just say, we with you. <laughs> he wanted to explain why I'm with you. Right. You got the word of eternal life. And we believe uh-huh. and we yes, sure, sure. Amen. that you the Christ. Yeah. Amen. I don't understand nothing about that bread. <laughs> I don't understand nothing about that blood. Right. I, I, ain't got, I still ain't got that. Uh-huh. But going through stuff on my way home, I don't have to figure everything out. I just got to hold on to Jesus. You don't have to figure everything out. Just hold on to Jesus. You don't have to work everything out. Just hold on to Jesus. Amen. 
That's the beauty of salvation. You don't have to have it all together. You can go to heaven with mental health issues. Thank you, Jesus. Watch the text here. Then it says, see, I'm going to do that, friend. Go ahead. Verse 70. Jesus answered them, have not I chosen you 12 and one of you is a devil? I love it. Y'all hear this? Verse 69 said, and we believe in the short of thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And then he says, he does, now he's going to get real real. Yes, now he's going to say. Real real. For real though. For real. That's right. For real. For real though. Listen. He's going to say, I've chosen you. Basically, but that means my father has given you. Amen. But I still know all y'all ain't real. Uh, all right. He said, one of you is a devil. You still here faking it? You're know, acting like you with the team? But he called him out, and one of you, one of, and now, I wonder what you, I wonder what Judas was doing at that second. Uh, you know how you know how the you know how the fake folk are. They like. <laughs> now I'm, I'm almost done. Almost done. So now that Jesus uh, has dealt with them, now he uh, uh, goes back home because the Jews are trying to kill him, yeah. and now he had to go through stuff with his brothers and sisters in Christ, now he's about to go through some stuff at home. Yeah. Oh, let's read it. Go ahead, Brother Claiborne. Uh, you, you want 71? No, hey, uh, no, no, skip 71. I think they got there. Yeah. Verse 1. He, he, he's, okay, well, we didn't read it, though. Go ahead and read it. <laughs> he, he spake of... Brother Claiborne he, got to read this. Go ahead, yeah, bro. I, I went to the head. He, he, he spake of Judas Iscariot, uh -huh. the son of Simon, uh -huh. for he... It was that should betray him, uh -huh. being one of the twelve. Daddy, now you know who it is, Judas. <laughs> fake, fake self. Go. Verse 1, brother, keep on. After these things, uh -huh. Jesus walked in Galilee, uh -huh. for he would not walk in Jewry, uh -huh. because the Jews sought to kill him. So he, he plotted out his plan. He knows that Jewry, they're trying to kill him there. Galilee... He goes that way because that's, that, that's, that's home. And now it says here, verse 2. Now the Jews' feast of the tabernacles was at hand. Verse 3. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence uh -huh. and go into Judea. Ho, ho, ho. I love, well, family folk is something else. <laughs> so he gets home. Yeah. You know, you know how you think when you come home? I, 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 I don't know if the saying is old or not, but I still believe a man's home is his castle. Amen. Oh, oh, I ain't get a lot of amens, though. Amen. I tell you. Right. <laughs> they say that's right. That's old. Okay, that's, that's, listen. But I still believe it. And somebody said there's no place like home. Yeah, right. Jesus goes home. And when he goes home to meet with his brother, They had heard the, they heard the stories about him. Right. They heard the report about him. But here you find here, uh, once he gets there and there is a feast of tabernacles where all the Jews are supposed to go right. for tabernacle tent. Yeah. For when they was in tents in the wilderness, yeah. they gotta go and celebrate the feast of tabernacles. Mm -hmm. His brother therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go to Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. But they, they're actually saying is, is that we want you to come up to Tabernacle with us. Because basically, we don't believe the reports. Okay. We know you when you was big brother. Okay. We know you when you wasn't, you know, this famous guy. Right. That's good. Now all of a sudden you go out and you get famous. And now we supposed to bow down. Y'all ain't got it yet. 
as a Christian, the hardest folk to win sometimes is with those who are familiar with you. Because they have a hard time believing that this dope smoking, liquor drinking, foul mouth, brother of mine, women running brother of mine, changed. And now talk about some, I'm in the Church of Christ. The one you read about in the Bible. They have a hard time with that. And the reason why they have a hard time with that, because family members remember yesterday. Right. Okay? Not tomorrow, yesterday. And because of that, they gotta they gotta put you through a test. You know, leave, you know, leave the blunt on the table. You know, you know, you know, uh, offer you, offer you, offer you a cup of, uh, 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 some wine, you know, you know, you know. Hey, tell them, drink this vodka with me, drink the vodka with me. Then when you don't drink the vodka, they say, well, they, they drink wine in the Bible. Hey, I'll test you out. These brothers want to test Jesus out. They're saying that if you who you say you are, go up to the tabernacle with us and show yourself and do all this miracle and all this other stuff there where, where the big people, the, the leadership can see you. Amen. We would have say, we would have said, but Claiborne. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret. Hold it. Now they're telling that boy, they phony. I should have named this, uh, this sermon the fakers. <laughs> but Jesus has to go through this right. to give his father glory. Amen. He has to go through this to give his father honor. So the brothers, the brothers told him, go up there and show yourself openly right. as if he hadn't, if he hadn't shown himself openly, how'd y'all get the report? Uh, How'd y'all know I was saying anything about being from God? And that's, you heard it. So now they telling Jesus, go up there and prove himself. Go show yourself. Now, because Jesus is trying to give God the glory. He said, I'm not doing that. What did it say, Brother Claiborne? Okay, see, so there's no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. Mm -hmm. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. That's the brothers. That's mm -hmm. what they saying. So if you so, if you who you say you are, you somebody show the world. And let me tell y'all got something while I'm on this part. I'm almost done. One thing you got to know about this is don't give God his glory. Don't be trying to give man Amen. glory that belongs to God. Amen. Don't be trying. If somebody come up to you and say, well, if you're a Christian right now, do this, 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 this. No. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they'll get you. Okay, you're a Christian now. Uh, yeah, uh, give me, loan me $500. Uh -huh. <laughs> you're, 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 oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, you're, give me $500. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's exactly right. Uh, no. I'm a Christian. I'm not giving you nothing. <laughs> But the gospel, that's it, that's it, that, see, that, that's right, that's right. So, 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 for neither did his brother, y'all see this in verse 5? The reason all this is happening is why? For neither, for, wait a minute, for neither did his brother believe in him. Because they didn't believe in him, keep going. Then Jesus said unto them, my time is not yet come. I'm not going up there, go ahead. But your time is always ready. You need to go up there. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. The, the world cannot hate you, uh -huh. but me it hateth. The world can't hate you because you fake like them. Uh -huh. Amen. 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 They're going to hate me. I'm, I'm truth. Amen. I'm the living word. I'm truth. 
But y'all, y'all, my brothers, but y'all fake. So go ahead on up there. They, they, they ain't gonna hate y'all. They gonna hate me. Uh -huh. Keep going. But me it hate it because I testify of it. What I tell you? They gonna hate me because I tell them. I call them out. Keep that, going. That the works thereof are evil. That their works are evil. Evil. Yes, Think. Wrong. Huh. Error. Huh. Transgression. Amen. Iniquity. Whatever bad word you can say, that's them. Huh. Keep going. Go ye up unto this feast. Uh huh. I I go not up yet uh, unto this feast. Uh huh. For my time is not yet full come. Hold it right there. Perfect. Right there. Shut your Bible. Shut your Bible. <laughs> because once he get him up there, he's not going to go up there as the Messiah. He's not going to go up there as the Christ. But he is going to go up there as a Jew. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Y'all ain't got that. He has to fulfill all the Jewish law. If that's a Jewish law, say come to the tabernacle, he has to go to the tabernacle. But he does not have to go to the tabernacle as the Christ. He don't have to go to the tabernacle as the Messiah. He don't have to go to the tabernacle as somebody, the, 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 the great miracle worker. He just got to go there as a Jew. I'm closing my sermon by saying this. When you love God, you're going to find a way to give God his glory regardless of how you're going to give him his glory. Because many times, and go on your way home, how many of you have been, been in storms in your life since you've been a Christian? Yes, sir. How, how, how many? Wait, let me see. Let me, let me see, let me see who's being fake out there. Who, who ain't raising their hand? Because if you're telling me that you've been a Christian and you never had no problems in your life, that's the problem right there. You got the problem of lying. All of us go through storms. All of us go through challenges. Now, I'm not, now maybe you thought I said that I'm letting them beat you up. And I, I wouldn't say that. I'm mean, just going through them. You come out victorious on the other side, but you still got to go through them. Jesus had to go through that with the multitude leading rejection. He had to go through that questioning his disciples. He had to keep Judas Iscariot with him still. Now he got to deal with his brothers here. Jesus had to go through all of that on his way home. That's just the stuff that we got to go through on our way home. But guess what? On the other side, God is waiting for you. And, and, and let me say this. Now, if you read the Bible right, it says you can get rewards on this side, too. Uh, you don't have to wait to get to heaven to scream out, thank you, Jesus. You can do that on this side. But sure enough, when I get there, listen, I haven't cried on I'm, I'm, I'm done. I haven't thanked God and cried on this side for his glory. But I know I'm going to show enough cry on this side. Because that's what Jesus means to me. Amen. So I'm tired right now. <laughs> nope, that's my lesson. If you're out there and you are going through stuff Amen. on your way trying to get to God, I got good news for you. You don't have to try to get to God no more, I can tell you how to get to God. Amen. It's written in his word. Yes. Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Amen. Romans 10, 17 said, faith come by hearing Amen. and hearing by the word of God. Right. You got to understand also that we got to repent. And that repentance, the Bible said in Luke 13, he said, he said, if, 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 I tell you, Nate, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. That means that, and what is repent? It means turn around, go a different way. Godly sorrow. I'm sorry I hurt you, God. 
I'm sorry I did this, God. That's why repentance is so important. And that's why, that's why repenting and obeying the, obeying the gospel wash away all your sin. Because repentance is important to say, God, I was wrong. I'm sorry. I hurt you. I, I, I repent. And I'm ready to follow you till I die. That after you repent, now confess the sweetest name on mortal tongue. Amen. Jesus said, if you whosoever confess me before man, I will confess him before my father in heaven. But whosoever deny me before man, when it's time for you to get judged, I'm going to deny you before my father in heaven. And the last thing you got to do is get yourself baptized. Get your sins washed away. Amen. Walk with God. Come out, come up out the water in the newness of life. Yeah. Some of you thinking right now, well, what, what did that water do? It does nothing without your faith. Right. When you go down there by faith, yes. trusting and believing in God, it does a whole lot of stuff. Yes, it will blow your mind what it's going to do. <laughs> now, if you're just getting down there because you want to marry Susie, Then there ain't no baptizer. You might well have took a soap and a washcloth with you. Because that's not a baptism. Amen. Baptism, when you go down for the washing away of your sins and you rise up to walk in the newness of life. That's baptism. And then be faithful unto death and he'll give you a crown of life. Amen. So remember, we got to go through some stuff on our way home. That's it. God bless your church. Don't just stand right now. Stand right now. Stand right now. Come on. Stand right now. Give somebody an opportunity to obey God right now. What a fellowship. What a joy that Bible divine. Is right, I tell you. Leaning All you need to come right on now. the everlasting arms. If you're out there online, you what a blessedness. What a peace is mine. All you need to come right here in the audience right now. Everlasting you need to come give me your hand and give God your so heart. And we'll help you to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus and you just sin, lean. just repent of your sins. On Jesus, and trust in God. He said, God will be with you every step of the way. From all of the Lord, come and obey the gospel. Do it right now. Do it right now. Lean Won't you come? Oh, Jesus, Won't you come? Oh, Jesus, 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 Amen. Amen. We do thank uh, Brother Wilkie and Brother Bethia for the see, see how the Holy Ghost just bring the messages together. Amen. We thank, thank God for having uh, put those messages on their heart to preach into our hearing. And I have a few prayer requests and a couple cards to bring to you. Um, Waiting on Brother McNeil. These other okay, thank you, sir. Okay, for the prayer request of those that are here, I have one from uh, Olivia Scroggins. Um, she's asking uh, prayers for spiritual growth. She says I'm uh, also asking for me to be hump to be humble women, for me to humble myself to God's will, um, especially when. Um, when uh, it's what handed, what is that? Huh? When it's hard. Oh, well, look, we all. The, she said, especially when it's hard. Okay, um, for my daughter and all the uh, the youth that I work with. Amen. She's asking prayers for them as well. Amen. Uh, Sister Kim Hamilton is asking um, 
prayers for family members. She says, please uh, keep my brother, uh, Tim Simpson. That is Simpson, right? Simpson uh, in prayer for the loss of, of his uh, birth mom. I'm uh, praying that not, I'm praying not only for his uh, healing, but for his ability to cope um, with maturity. Please uh, keep all who are grieving in prayer for uh, their comfort and strength. And uh, thank you uh, in advance for your prayers. Uh, Sister Kim Hamilton is asking uh, prayers for health issues, spiritual growth, family members. She says, please continue to pray for my husband, Brother Carl Washington, and his sister, uh, Annette, and their family. Uh, as we mourn the loss of their mother, Sister Angeline, Sister Angeline, uh, Sister Angeline, um, yeah, no, well, okay, I got to get to the line first. Uh, I was up here. Sister Angeline Board, uh, and continue to pray for uh, all of our Church of Christ members, families, and friends, and may the Lord bless them as they <coughs> help us get through this time. And she thanks you <coughs> in advance for your prayers. Uh, Sister Imani West asking prayers for health issues, um, spiritual growth, and for family members. She says prayers for my mental health and the constant storms I go through in my life, especially at my job, for, for, God's, um, for God's glory. Continued prayers for um, Niall and uh, Pinckney family, uh, prayers for my older sister as she uh, prepares for her wedding. Amen? Amen? All right, so keep her in prayers for that. Brother Daryl McNeil. Brother McNeil is asking, um, asking for prayers for uh, job decisions that are uh, before him. Uh, may God um, guide his decisions and for all the, bl the blessings that um, God has given him and uh, given him and his household. Amen. Um, Brother Bruce and Gigi um, Bryant, um, prayers of thanksgiving for, um, uh, for 19 years a happy, it was, says happy anniversary for 19 years tomorrow. Amen. So they, amen. They're celebrating 19 years of marriage and uh, we, we um, ask God to continue to bless them. Uh, well, you, 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 leave it alone. Okay. Because. Uh, I, I, I mean, when you get to 30 and then 40 and 50, then that's a long years, you know. But, but if it's been, amen, okay, amen. Some people that stay together for years is long, you know. But anyway, Sister Yolanda Crawley is asking our prayers for traveling grace. She said, I will be traveling next week. Pray for my sister and brother who are having uh, health issues. Pray for my, um, is, is, what is that, renters? Where you at? Huh? Is that renters? Okay. For renters that, um, this fancy writing, I'm telling you, look like a doctor wrote this. Uh, renters that um, still have to move and, um, and pay their back rent, okay? So we pray for those, those renters that God will bless them to be able to do what they're supposed to do, do the right thing, and uh, pray for Sister Crawley as she travels uh, for safety. Amen. Uh, Sister, Sister Shalita Handy is asking prayers for uh, family members. She said, wishing Sean a happy 13th birthday. That's her son, right? A uh, happy 13th birthday. Prayers for um, protection and um, and for 
protection and, and guidance as he enters his teenage years. Amen. Yeah, you need that nowadays. Uh, these teenage years or something. Okay. Um, I have uh, Sister Christian is uh, um, prayers for the Christian family. Amen. Okay. Brother Achenio F. Lucas, Sr., he says, please pray for the following and, and their uh, friends and families. Sister Spann, Sister Hope, Sister Harrison, Dixon, Brother and Sister Washington, Brother A. Washington, Brother McCall, Brother Hines, Sister Graves, the Church of Christ leadership, the sick, the bereaved, pray for the world, uh, pray for our children, our parents, uh, Brother Watson, Brother Folks, Sister uh, Fowler, and pray that God's will will be done. And that's from Brother Tenio Lucas Sr. Okay, Sister Brenda Bethea is asking prayers for family members, asking prayers for my mom's recovery. She will uh, meet with the oncologist tomorrow for, uh, to determine further treatments. Um, thanking God for his goodness, his mercy, his faithfulness, and love. Thankful for your prayers, cards, and acts of kindness. Amen. Sister Hazel Leslie, asking prayers for health issues. Um, please keep my daughter, uh, Sister Paula Thomas, in prayer. Also, um, the pain in, in my left hip has uh, become unbearable. Um, painkillers um, don't, don't help anymore. So we're asking God to relieve her of this pain that she has in her body. Um, Sister Gwen Watson asking prayers for health issues, spiritual growth, family members, and traveling grace. Says prayers for my husband who's having a surgery on Friday. Um, may he have a speedy recovery. Uh, may God continue to uh, bless our family and all that, all the members and leadership of the Church of Christ. And prayers to the Board family on the loss of, of their mother and uh, our sister in Christ. Um, that's the prayer request I have in here. The ones that came through uh, our media. Um, it says, uh, Sister Darlene Grant. It says, good afternoon, family. Please continue to keep my family and me in prayer as well as, um, as the Silas, Page, and Johnson families as they grieve the loss of Angela Silas Page. Uh, prayers for all in the household of faith. And she thanks you um, for your prayers. Uh, Sister Antoinette Gross, good morning, church family. It is such a beautiful day outside, and I am truly thankful for the blessing of seeing another day and for God's uh, presence in my life during my illness. Uh, so keep Sister Gross in your prayers as she recuperates from a medical procedure that she just had recently. Um, Brother Sharp, Papa Sharp, says, Good afternoon. This is Clayton and Eudoria Sharp. We are thanking God for this beautiful, blessed day. Um, we are requesting prayer for all those who have suffered loss of loved ones, for the sick and shut in. We are requesting prayers for our family and for our church family, for strength in our walk with Jesus Christ and the leadership of East Baltimore Church of Christ and the churches of Christ throughout the, the world, amen. Um, and then lastly, um, uh, Elsie Chambly, Chambly. Um, good morning, uh, church family. Thank you all for praying for me and my family and continue to pray for us and others that, and others that I continue to pray for the church. Thank you and all praise is due to him. Amen. To God. I have two cards here. One says, uh, thank you. And then it says, thank you to the church. 
with sincere thanks and appreciation. Uh, thank you for the acknowledgement of my loss of my brother, John C. Smith, Jr. Um, bless you all. And that's from Sister Gwendolyn Graves. And the other one reads, um, thank you. Thank you to the East Baltimore Church of Christ for the love and support given to me. Um, plus, uh, given to me, um, this, this outpouring will um, never be forgotten. Special thanks to Brother Bethia and the kitchen ministry for all they they did or do all they do um thank you again and this is from sister geraldine dixon amen all right amen um that's all the prayer requests that i have here i don't um before i go to god's throne was there any that was missed go ahead brother. um got a message from sister pamela james and she asked prayer in the loss of her father, um, Albert Carey Jr. Mm -hmm. So please keep Sister James in, in our prayers. And also, I um, wanted to acknowledge, um, this is strange. I've been knowing this guy for 30 years. But I only always say Lee. I don't even know the last name or nothing. Lee what? Bowen. Bowen. <laughs> and, and, and his wife. So good to have you guys here. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. 30 years, Lee. All right. Amen. Okay. Uh, Pam. Pam King. Okay. Be all, let us, let us go to God in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once more and again for your men servant who came and preached unto us your unadulterated, un unadulterated gospel. Lord, we are so thankful for the message that they brought today, and we pray um, that we would meditate on that word. Go back and listen to it again and again, just to understand uh, uh, our relationship better with you and how that the, the way we live and what happens in our lives uh, is not just always about us but it's, it's about you and the glory that you rightly deserve um, Lord we, we just thank uh, Br Brother Wilkie for making it plain and thank Brother Bethia for making it plain as well that you know we, we got a job to do you know God did his job and he continues to do it but there, there is some things that we need to do. We have to decide whose side we on. We can't sit on the fence because we know the fence belongs to the devil. And Lord, we just pray that we would make a decision to follow him and be blessed on this side and forever be blessed on the other side. Lord, continue to be with those families that are grieving losses of all kind. Be with those that are going through uh, medical procedures and, and rehabilitation. Um, restore them to their much wanted health and strength. Lord, please forgive us all of the sin that we have committed and word, thought it be uh, that uh, our prayers would never be hindered. Lord, we just love you so much. Be with um, us as we go through everyday life situations um, and, and just understand that uh, it, it's God has the glory out of whatever is happening to our lives and sometimes you just bring, bring it to us having our back against the wall so we we we'll know that when uh, things get changed it's because of you and nothing that we did ourselves but continue to guide and direct our steps and we be ever so careful to give you the praise honor and glory that you rightly deserve this is our prayer in Jesus name and for his sake and let us all say amen, amen.
So the CPAC processor is very low production for that cup. And then forward to the second, the original is nine, six, seven, eight, and two sizes out to the end. But this size set, we use those boundaries for also weak stuff. And we use those boundaries for also weak boundaries. So that each one of the arrest purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or necessity, for God loves to cheer for giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have all sufficiencies in all things, and may have abundance of every good work. So let's give cheerfully and boundfully. To Canaan's land, I'm on my way where the soul of a man never died. My darkest night will turn to day where the soul of a man never died. Dear friends, there'll be no sad farewell, will be no tears dim, no dim night. All is peace and joy and love where the soul of a man never died. A rose is blooming there for me where the soul of a man never dies. And I will spend eternity where the soul of a man never die no sad fair no sad farewells there will be no tear dim die where all is love where the soul of a man never dies have we overlooked anyone who wants to give? Let's pray. Holy, holy, holy is thou, almighty God. Fathers, we approach your throne of grace once again, just thanking you, thanking you for allowing us to give back a blessing that you so richly blessed us with. We pray that we take this off and to build the border of your kingdom and do what's pleasing and acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' holy and precious name, we do humbly pray. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Coming for you to collect for the Hartford County Church of Christ. Um, we have several methods of giving. Uh, we have, um, you can mail in your offering to 715 South Shamrock Road in Bel Air. We also have uh, PayPal and Cash App. Our handles is Hartford County COC. And also you can go online and give there. You just tap on the, uh, well, click on the giving tab. Um, to continue the spirit of giving, I want to read Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. It says, Give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over. Amen? Amen. Amen. Shall men give unto your bosom, for with the same measure that ye meet, with it shall be measured to you again. All right, let's continue to glorify God and not give in our giving, church. Amen? Amen. 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 Verse 3. A love light beams across the phone where the soul of a man never died. It shines to light the shores of home where the soul of a man never died. Dear friends, there'll be no sad farewell, will be no tear dim, no dim dies. All is peace and joy and love where the soul of a man 
never die. I am on my way to that fair land where the soul of a man never die, where there will be no parting hand, where the soul of a man never die. Dear friends, there'll be no sad farewell, there will be no tears dim, dim die. All is peace and joy and love where the soul of a man never dies. Church, at this time, Brother Nick Sass will lead us to the throne of grace. Pray with me. Dear Father God, we are just thankful for we know everything, all of it belongs to you. We thank you for this opportunity to give back a small portion. We thank you, Lord, for your kingdom. We thank you for the, the kindness of Hartford County to let us be with them, with East Baltimore. Dear Father God, we pray that these funds that we have collected will just help to expand the borders of your kingdom, will just help to spread your word throughout the Harford County area. Lord, Father God, be with us as we labor to do your will. Thank you for your way. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We thank Brother Wilkie and Brother Bethea for that fine message. Amen. 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 Uh, I have three visitors cards. The first visitor we have is Dequi Wooty. Is that right, brother? Raise your hand. Okay, that's him in the back. And he says... He says he's permanent in the area. He said, my sister is based in Africa. Liberia is also a member of the body, and he is interested in becoming a member of the congregation. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Amen. I also have a visitor's card for Marcus Sykes, Amen. and he's a, a visitor of a guest of Sister Claiborne. He, he just walked out? Okay. Okay, he's in the foyer. We'll get him after, after church. And I also have a visitor's card from Jalen Moffat. Is Jalen Moffat? I think he was here at 8 o'clock. Uh, there she is. Is, is that right, Jalen? Jalen Moffat. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so for all our visitors, we have a gift bag for you for just spending time with us here at East Baltimore. It's just a token of our appreciation, and we will make sure that each and every one of you receives your gift. Amen? Amen. Uh, amen. Announcements. Um, East Baltimore will be having its combined worship service Sunday, April 28th. Uh, there will be no nine, uh, 8 a.m. service. There will be a 945 uh, Bible study and 11 a.m. combined worship service. A fellowship meal will be served after the 11 a.m. worship service. The protein for that, for that will be served is ham. If you do not eat ham, there is an alternative meal that will be uh, offered to you. And if you need one, please sign up in the foyer. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because we know everybody doesn't eat ham, but we'll, we'll make substitutions for that. Amen? Um, the registration is now open for the First Harmonies of Women's Fellowship. Um, it's entitled, Am I My Sister's Keeper? And that is Saturday, April 27th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. You can register, register through the QR code that is attached to the flyer out in the foyer, or you can contact our very own sister, Kim Hamilton. Amen? Amen. Registration will close Wednesday, April 24th. So ladies, please sign up um, or get in touch with Sister Kim. Amen? Amen. Um, 
for Sister Angeline Boyd, uh, there's a live stream service on Friday, uh, April 19th from 2.30 to 3.30. Amen? Amen. For our very own Sister Angeline Boyd, once again, there will be a live stream of her service from 2.30 to 3.30. So it will not be recorded. So you can't go back and look at it later. So please, if you want to view it, you can view it through the live, screen, live stream from 2.30 to 3.30. And there is a, a flyer in the foyer that explains how to get to her live stream. Amen? Amen. There are several copies out there, so you can just take a copy or you can just take a picture of it and, and make sure you can get on the live stream for our sister. Amen? The Mid-Atlantic Youth Co Chorus named Blended Voices. Uh, that's coming up. Attention East Baltimore Church of Christ, Christ youth and family members. You want to sing? You have a passion to sing. Under the leadership of our very own sister Kim Hamilton, we invite you to the Mid-Atlantic Youth Chorus for all ages 10 through 19. If you're older than 19 and want to participate, you can particip participate as a coordinator. The first practice will be Sunday, April 20th from 10 a.m. to 12 noon at the Church of Christ at Northwest. You can sign up using the QR code on the flyer that is located in the foyer. If you have any other detail, if you need any other details, please contact Sister Sapphire Boone. Amen? Amen. Singles. I say again, singles. Singles Spring Fling. It's going to take place April 27th at 430 at the home of our very own Brother Rogers which is located at 2708 Quicksilver Way, Bel Air, Maryland. Uh, it's, the menu is potluck. There's a sign-up sheet in the foyer, so please sign up in the foyer on the sign-up sheet. Um, please, bring, please put down what you are bringing. If you have any qu questions, please contact Brother Rogers or uh, Sister Gina DeShield, amen, or La LaShika Jenkins. P.S. You must be single to attend. Amen? Amen. Amen. Camp Minitani, Junior and Senior Fall. Camp Minitani, Junior and Senior High School Fall Retreat is coming up April 26th through the 7th. That's grades 7 through 12, $45. Um, who's the point of contact on here? Please see me for a point of contact, and I'll make sure I have the answers for that. Okay? I still have more. Bear with me. Um, continue to uh, join our congregation. Keep in mind that every Sunday in the month of April, we are taking pictures. Pictures will be taken after 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. worship services every Sunday in the month of April. We're taking pictures over in the overflow. Uh, please see Sister um, Annika or Brother Mercer. Amen? And if you're in your uh, right attire and you want to take a picture today, you can do it done today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Walk for Christ, May 4th, from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., location Lake Montebello Park. Brother Moore and Sister uh, Jeanette Ort Ortegon is in charge of that, and Brother Moore just stepped out. He's on his way to Montebello Park as we speak. Amen? Amen. Also, Saturday, May 4th, is the Community Mental Health Awareness Day down at the Beltway Church of Christ. Amen? Keep that in our prayers. We have Hershey Park coming up. July 24th, please see Sister Sapphire Boone in reference to uh, the Hershey Park trip. Um, health fair coming up June 8th. And some people ask, what is a health fair? Health fair, we're going to monitor and test blood pressures. We're going to look at uh, different ways to uh, maintain good health. We also are going to look at um, the coronavirus and how to prevent the coronavirus and as well as which vaccines are right for you, okay? So there'll be a lot of um, vendors out there in dealing with health care, so please come out June 8th and reference uh, the health fair. Also, we're going to need some strong, able, willing men to help set up the fest tent that we're going to have out there um, prior to the health fair. So we're going to set up a tent, so we'll have shade, we're going to have hot dogs, and potato chips, stuff like that. So it's going to be a real good time. So please come join us with our health fair. Amen? Amen. These are all the announcements that I have at this time. Are there any others? Brother Bethia, we have a care group meeting this? 
care group? Yes. Yeah, here's your guest. That's Mr. Marcus. Hello, Mr. Marcus. How you doing? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay. You're a guest as well? He's a guest. And your name is? Miguel. Thank you for spending time with us, Mr. Miguel. <laughs> Amen. I now turn over the service to Brother Bethia. Thank you, Brother. Appreciate that. Um, for, um, I just want to give you the, uh, also the in-person information for the funeral for Sister um, Angela Boyd. Uh, the funeral is going to be held, uh, first of all, the viewing. The viewing will be held this Thursday, uh, 5 to 8 p.m. at Wally Funeral Home, 9200 Liberty Road. Uh, Wally Funeral Home, and also on that Friday, the wake will start um, at 2 o'clock. 2 to 2.30 will be the wake. Uh, 2.30 to 3.30 will be the funeral at the same location. And that's Wally, Wally Funeral Home, 9200 uh, Liberty Road in Randallstown, Maryland. Um, if you have any questions, please let us know. And also, the family is welcoming uh, any, uh, any and all um, dishes and things like that for those who are at the house and visiting and all that stuff like that. So we can drop dishes off and things like that at the, at the home. I think the home is 7 Seneca? Seneca? Santa? Santa? S-E-N-T-A, Seven Center Court in uh, Gwen Oak, Maryland, 21207. 21207. Amen. 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 All right, church, won't you stand to your feet? As we'll sing one verse of God is real. Amen. There are some things I may not know. There are some places I, I can go, but I am sure of this one thing. Yeah. Then my God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. Yes, my God is real. He's real in my soul. Oh, my God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. His love for me is like pure gold. For my God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. Amen, Amen church. Let's go to God in prayer. Most wise and everlasting God, our Father, the great God of heaven, we once again humbly approach your throne of grace, just thanking you, thanking you, thanking you, thank you for this worship service that we uh, ha have had today. We pray that all the preaching and all the teaching and all, all the service that we have rendered to you today has been pleasing and acceptable in our sight. We thank you for the preachers and the preach word, which is able to save our souls. We pray that we not only have heard the principles that were taught through the preaching, but Lord, that we will leave out of here ready to have more trust and more faith in Jesus Christ because of the word that we heard today. Father God, be with us and guide us and bless us, Lord. Uh, just uh, give us traveling grace back to our settled homes, Lord, that we would get there without hurt, harm, or danger. Help us to realize, Father, that today, the whole day, yeah. is the Lord's day, Lord. Right. So when we get home, help us to conduct ourselves right. as the children of God, Lord, yeah. that the world may see the love that we have for one another, and Lord, see the love that we have for you, Father. Father God, be with us, guide us, bless us. We'll be ever so careful to give your name, praise, honor, and glory. We ask and pray all these things in Jesus' name. And in his name we pray. 
Amen. 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 God is real. How's your day? Like that, brother? Man. Good, good word, brother. Good word. Appreciate it. Thanks for the time. Yeah, man. What's up? Hey, what's up, Ron? Hey, brother. 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 You tell us what you get ready to say, and then you say it. Thank you, my brother. And you explain to us. You give me a lot of background. That's what I mean. Yeah, I, you give I, me a lot of background. Right. So you let me know where I'm, where, where, where you're coming from. Right, where I'm right. From. That's right. Well, you, I like that. If you don't get that kind of content, you'll miss it. I can sit there the whole day and listen to it. Ah. I, need, I need to go home and look at it again. Thank you, my brother. Appreciate it. To God be the glory, right? Amen. Let, Thank you. 